three. Dave Waddle with the golf cap from the United States. Next to him in lane four, Robert Uko of Kenya. All of these men could win oh. the gold medal. Hey everybody, welcome to the Running Theory Podcast YouTube page. A little bit different video coming at you today. In today's environment of lack of anything sports related or track field related, I want to come out with a video series to dive into some of my favorite moments, some of my favorite races, things that are maybe undervalued or things that have shaped me personally as a track and field fan. Some of our favorite moments or defining moments as as a fandom in general. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. It's a little bit of a different takeaway from what I usually do. Let's jump in. I'm a sucker for anything from the 70s era of sports, from Kareem's hookshot to Dave Waddle's painter hat. And it's that very hat that is the discussion of today's video. The man who made the hat, not the hat itself, as much as I would Probably. Running in the era of legends, Dave Waddle is famous for two things. How he won his gold medal in 1972, and forgetting to take off his trademark painter's hat during the medal ceremony. However, even among running history buffs, Waddle is often an afterthought when talking about his era. When you think of 60s and 70s running, the names that often come to mind are like Pre, Shorter, Ryan, Co, Laze Viren, Kip Kino, so on and so forth. I want to leave it up to you to decide whether his footnote in history is just that, or if you believe that he's underrated. I believe he's underrated for three reasons that I'll explore below. Those three reasons being the 1972 Olympic season, the 1972 Olympics themselves, and Waddle's career post-1972 compared to that of his compatriots. Let's talk about the 1972 Olympic trials. The 1972 U.S. Olympic trials is a real who's who of track and field royalty. Pretty set the 5,000 meter U.S. record and was thought of as a shoe-in for the podium. Frank Shorter won the 10K, and while Jeff Galloway came in second and dueled one of my favorite athletes, Kenny Moore, in the marathon, Jim Ryan at the time held the mile in 800 meter world records, even took it to Waddle during the 1500 meters at the same trial. So it's safe to assume that while Weil was one of the top athletes in the trials, considering he treated the 800 as a warm up towards his event, his 800 meter world record was a surprise to many. Dave Waddle had, and still has, always considered himself a miler. The 1500 meter was his proving ground at the Olympic trials, and only one man was standing in his way, Jim Ryan. Ryan was having an up and down year, he reportedly was dealing with a bout of dysentery, which no doubt would affect your training, as well as admitting that he wasn't mentally committed to the sport anymore. Ryan and Waddle even faced off earlier in 1972 at Drake, which saw Waddle taking over the race, and Ryan being booed off the track after running a 414. Watch this race. Imagine booing a runner in today's track field climate. Come for the Dave Waddle, Waddle Dream Mile upset. Stay for Marty LaCourie openly mocking Tim Ferguson on comedy. Bill Toomey. Thank you, Jack. Glad to have Marty helping me out in this race again. He was the Dream Mile winner last year. Marty, speaking of dreams in this race, we have a, a fantastic story as far as I'm concerned. I've been out of the country for a couple of weeks, but I came back to hear the story of a of a miler who supposedly either in his dreams or in practice ran a mile faster than you. What do you think about that? Well, he's rumored to have run a, two fi a 352 mile, which would be the second fastest ever by an American, rumored to have done this in practice. His father swears that he did it. Well, he's down there. He's in the race. And he's in the race with Jim Ryan, a man who has been better than 352. If, in fact, he did run 352, we might see something. The story of Waddle's 1972 could easily be the story of Jim Ryan's star fading away from the sport, but I'll save that story for another day. Waddle's plan was to run the 800 meters of the trials as a workout, to mentally have another high caliber race under his belt as he felt his fitness could carry him to a good time, to better prepare himself for the 1500 meter battle with Ryan. And with the kick he possessed, anything could happen over the last lap. And boy, did anything happen. It's extremely hard to find splits for the 1972 Olympic trials, so it's hard to say for sure that how this race planned out. But one thing is for sure, the race got out hot. And because of that, and the caliber of athlete in the event, the race would yield a world record from an unlikely source. It's easy to look back 48 years later and say Waddle had no chance. But that, went, that would be entirely untrue. For one, Dave Waddle had a renowned kick and would often post the fastest split, fast 800 meter split of any 1500 in any race that we know that we have the splits. Now, 1972, it's a little bit hard. Um, he had the speed, and when you have strength and speed of running 120 mile weeks through cross country, Dave Waddle was world renowned for running high mileage. He was a cross country guy that came down for track and field at Bowling Green. And I would argue that his 144 is more, more impressive than his 353. 
And if you look at any of the equivalency charts, which I'll post in the kind of notes of this video, I think that fair. So that's 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 a big case. So was his 800 meter world record a surprise at the time? Yeah. Is his 800 meter goal a surprise? It really shouldn't be. But let's talk about the 1972 Munich Olympics. The 72 Olympics are mainly remembered for the hostage standoff when Palestinian terrorists would sneak into the Olympic Village and take members of the Israeli team hostage. That has no doubt marred the image of these Olympic Games. Most people don't remember Priest's 25,000 meter run, Ryan and Waddle's failure to advance in the 1500 meter, or even Frank Shorter's marathon gold. They do, however, remember Waddle's Olympic gold medal race. This race is best remembered for Waddle's seemingly impressive kick coming from 50 meters back to claim the victory. But let's unpack that race a little bit. It should be important to remember that even though Waddle had the world record coming into the race, Yevgeny Arzahov. Yevgeny Arsenal. It took me no less than 10 takes to get that. Hadn't lost in 1971 and had run at 145 earlier that year. The race was very much framed as communism versus the free world, like every good athletic event should be. Where Arzahanov was poised to take down Kenyan upstart Mike Boyt, that's Dr. Mike Boyt to you, and leave Waddle in the dust. The race went out fast, and because of this, many will swear that Waddle ran some outrageous negative split. But the truth is, Waddle stayed within himself, a strategy, and ran relatively even splits while the rest of the race field faded back, back towards him. Waddle's reluctance to go with the pack was part strategy and part lacking full confidence heading into the race. Between now and the Olympic trials, he went on his honeymoon and at some point came down with a nasty case of tendonitis in his knee, caused him to drop mileage considerably. You can hear it on the race, them questioning if he even should have gotten married. How outrageous. Thus, after two rounds of prelims, and with the 1500 meters still to come, he was not feeling the level of fitness he felt during the trials. So the Kenyan Boyt and the Russian Arsahanov taking the race out as they played right into Waddle's hand. Waddle sat back, ran within himself, and once he came within striking distance, he made his move. He charged forward over the last 100 meters and would out lean a fading Boyt and a diving Arzahanov and cement himself into the American zeitgeist. Now, let's talk about the aftermath. This is arguably the high point of American athletics until Shorter won gold in the marathon. As alluded to earlier, this was not a great Olympics for America's favorite distance runners, and the hostage situation would be, and still is, the talking point of the 1972 Munich Olympic Games. Yet, we can still look back fondly at Waddle's run. The dream of a man who stood no chance, even though he probably should have been the favorite going in, the real American dream. Waddle would go on to win the NCAA title in the mile, setting the final record in the event before they moved to the more internationally accepted 1500 meters. He would also compete against Pre in the Hayward Field Restoration Meet in 1973, where he would beat the legend and run 353. This is peak Dave Waddle. As without much of a pro circuit at the time, and without many opportunities to train post-collegially, Waddle's career after Bowling Green is pretty sparse. He's quoted as saying, I knew myself well enough that I didn't think I could have kept the competitive fires burning until the Montreal Olympics in 1976. My strength was really taken from my teammates and coach at Bowling Green. I lost that when I graduated and had to train on my own. And just wasn't the same runner. I needed someone to push me, but I didn't want to relocate to another place of the club like Florida Track Club or the Chicago Track Club. When I made the decision around pro track, it was easier to make since I didn't plan to continue competing as an amateur. But I was never in the same league as I was as an amateur. I thought I could keep running and earn a few dollars. The downfall of the International Track Association was that we had a who's who of track guys like Kip Kino, Jim Ryan, Ben Chip Show, Bob Seagree, and Lee Evans, but none of us were competing as we did in our prime except for Chip Show. When the pro times aren't matching the amateurs, you're in trouble, and so it was with the ITA," said Dave Waddle when he was speaking to Gary Killen. So whereas runners like Pre had their life cut tragically short, Ryan had many records to his name, Shorter was a prolific winner and a staple in the marathon for a decade, Waddle burned bright for two years and then chose to walk off into the sunset. Waddle's legacy is no doubt affected by racing against giants and winning against those giants. Dave Waddle's one of few Americans to set a world record, win a gold medal, and win an NCAA title, 
all within less than two years. You burn bright. Burn bright. Anyway, that's enough for this video for today. If you liked what you had to see, a little bit different, a little bit of change of pace, uh, feel free to subscribe. Give me a little thumbs up action down below and uh, I'll be very happy for it. And I'll talk to you guys soon.